Today we've got an iPad Mini 4 with a damaged FPC. So we're going to go ahead and replace this. As you can see here on the end, this is all messed up because uh, it was installed with improper alignment. I guess that's the best way to put it. So, you know, you can't really expect your supplier to replace this. This is physical damage caused by an installation error. The good news is that if you've got uh, some tools and some practice, you can actually replace these things relatively easy, I would say. Um, I do recommend you practice on these first, you know, make sure you're, you feel confident about replacing them, but for the most part, all we have to do is heat this and slide it right out of position, and you can actually grab a donor this way also. It's easier, obviously, just to buy the replacement part, and they are available, but if not, if you just heat this up and uh, make sure you've got everything insulated so you don't burn anything behind it, and I don't recommend using those blue rubber mats because they tend to bubble up. And when they do, it's going to get your microphone, your uh, microscope all out of focus. But you can see here, if you just very gently come in, and I've got pretty uh, relatively low temperature on this. You don't need a lot of heat to get these off. So don't come in here blasting this thing with like uh, 420 Celsius. Uh, but you can see that comes off really clean. And then what we'll, go out, what we'll do is just go ahead and remove all of the factory solder that's on here and we'll put down some leaded solder and then we'll get the new one installed using a combination of hot air and the soldering iron. I'd also recommend that you use a lower than usual concentration of rubbing alcohol here to clean this up. If you go in with the 99%, you're going to strip the paint right off of the flex cable. So I generally use a 91% here to clean this up. So we'll try to get this as close to the original position as we possibly can. And once you've got it in the right spot, we'll go ahead and tack these things down just to keep it straight. And you can see it slid off there a bit. And from here, we'll just go across and touch these up once at one at a time.
and you may have to add some new solder to your iron. And hopefully you can see those are actually flowing all the way back underneath each pin. Just make sure you've got plenty of flux and a sufficient amount of solder on your iron in order to flow these out. And then if you want to go in with some hot air and just warm this up and uh, just kind of melt everything so it looks nice and factory don't blow it off the board off the uh, cable obviously well for some reason this row closest to me didn't come out exactly the way I wanted it to so I'm gonna give you a zoomed in view here so you can take a look and you want you really want to make the you really want to make sure that you've got plenty of solder on these pins because as people are kind of uh, wrestling around with getting the connector plugged in they're gonna put some stress on them so we want these things to last a long time so we'll go over here again and just remember if you've got sufficient flux and um, enough solder you can go over these and, and they're pretty easy to tack down or to flow rather the main thing is just you just want a tiny bit of solder on the end of your iron and you'll probably run out about a third to a half ways through so you just need to add a little bit more as you go And once we get this cleaned up, it will be uh, really good as new. And in my experience, if you bought your replacement part and they had refurbished it and done some soldering, you can actually do a better job of soldering these on than they uh, do at the factory in many cases. All right, so that's looking good. And uh, just a couple last things I wanted to mention. This is a great way to practice if you've got some broken screens laying around. Uh, you can just take these FPCs off and put them back on if you want to get better at this type of soldering. And also, if you have screens that you're sending back in and getting refurbished or uh, otherwise, if they don't care about the connectors here, I would just cut them off and keep them on hand so that you have spare parts. Never a bad idea. Alright, well I hope that you found that helpful, and I'll see you all next time.